The Water for All Partnership is an EU-funded initiative for scientific research and innovation for the water sector. Its goal is to tackle water challenges to face climate change, help to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and boost Europe's competitiveness and growth to achieve a water smart society. The Pillar D of Water for All, led by Water Europe, intends to demonstrate the efficiency of innovative solutions through the Water Oriented Living Labs. This is a series of interviews to the frontrunners Water Oriented Living Labs that will join forces and collaborate in the next phases of the program. Enjoy the series. Hello, today we interview Jan van Velk, who is a Demer Basin Coordinator at VMM, and Joachim de Klerk from Innovation House Architecture Workroom. They represent the Living Lab Herken Mombeek. Hello. The first question is, what are the innovative practices, technologies and methodologies used in the Herken Mombeek region and which impact did you reach? Well, in the recent years, we have two organizations, Regional Landschap, Hasbroga en Voeren and um, the Demer Bessin uh, House. Uh, we made a sort of coalition with a lot of partners um, with the, the aim, in fact, to restore the water system in the area of Herk and Mombeek. Uh, I can give you three examples. Um, you have to know that most uh, rivers, let's say small rivers, brooks and valleys are in private ownership in this region. And by reaching the property owners, the larger property owners, mostly castle owners, uh, we could carry out uh, river and valley restoration at their own properties. We took care that uh, the work was done and they were they agreed to let it uh, happen on their um, property. So the result is that we have for a lot of kilometers uh, of water courses, a restoration of the system. That's uh, a first uh, example. A second example is um, one of the things that you need to do is meandering the brooks and uh, it costs a lot. Well, if you can find a way to do that with small investments, small scale investments, for example, you remove soil from the one bank of the watercourse and deposit it to uh, the other side some meters further on, then you have um, a method that is not very costly and that, uh, that means, in fact, that you can do a lot of this. And so you have a lot of results. Um, and a third example, in fact, what you see is that um, if you carry out this kind of meandering restoration uh, measures, you will see that it becomes a little bit sexy and that other property owners uh, want also their own meandering, their, their own uh, water system restoration on their property. Okay, thank you. Joachim, what lessons have been learned and what challenges have you faced? How did you overcome them? Maybe you can share a few tips and tricks. Thanks for the question. So what, what, what Jan clearly expressed is that there's a dynamic that has started locally. It was also supported by supra-local entities that provided means, support, knowledge uh, to do this. But the challenge that is uh, there, and it's in this region, uh, but also everywhere, is how to make sure that the changes that we make in the water system are sufficient to cope with the drought problem and the flooding problems uh, or events that we can face. And that's actually where the real challenge begins and where the Living Lab focuses on is to see how these dynamics of local coalitions on the one hand and the, mon the modeling of what we should do in this basin to cope with the drought and the flooding uh, questions, how we can match those two because these are two worlds, the worlds of action on the ground and the worlds of modeling in digital uh, worlds, can calculating. And actually the whole Living Lab is set up as a conversation between those two, an interactive conversation in between those two, where at the scale of the whole basin, we're collaborating with the different stakeholders and trying to come to terms and come to a vision, a shared vision on what goals, targets we want to reach, how much water we want to retain, uh, how, we, how far we want to go to with cope, in coping with the drought problem, and how much space we want to make for water uh, in the region. And now and then the local coalitions start to know that they don't only uh, they're, they're not only working together and realizing the sexy projects that Jan mentioned, but they're all, they also know that when they do this, 
they reach the targets and they are more safe for flooding and drought uh, in the future. And that's the whole dynamic, bringing those two worlds, the worlds of social innovation, you could say, on the ground and realizing uh, first pilots together with the modeling so that, in fact, we can build a practice, we can invent the practice um, um, that can also be replicated in this uh, basin, but also in other basins uh, throughout uh, Europe. And the lessons we learn, I think, is that we're, um, we see that the dynamics on the ground, uh, the, 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 the good dynamics on the ground, the fact that it's replicable, that it actually becomes attractive uh, to act, that um, uh, it requires a, a different type of table uh, a setting to make the conversation between this and uh, the modeling experts and the supra local policy makers who, who say we need to go further. Uh, and I think that's the table we, we try to establish and we established in this uh, living lab. Okay, thank you for your answers. Very interesting and good luck in the future with your living lab.